Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. Today's video, we are gonna be tackling quite possibly one of the most impossible repairs that you can do on a modern console. And I'm gonna be trying to replace the top screen in a new 2DS XL. I thought it'd be quite fun to just have a go. I really haven't got a lot to lose because this thing I paid 25 pounds for. Um, it's boxed, it hasn't got any manuals. It didn't come with a charger. Basically, I think I paid about 30 pounds for it. I'll put the listing up on the screen. And um, I just said, uh, she messaged me saying I forgot to send the charger, the seller, and uh, I said, don't worry about it, just refund me £6 or something like that, uh, which I thought was pretty fair, and that meant that this came down to about £25. The box is a little bit beaten up, but um, I really don't care too much. So here it is, here's the unit. It's in pretty good condition, um, apart from the fact that it's really, really grubby. The other thing as well, which is kind of noteworthy, is that this flap doesn't really close properly. It's always kind of open a bit, but I'm really not too worried about that. I just really want to replace this top screen. As you can see, if I turn it on, uh, the top screen has completely had it. So this is going to be a trying to fix video, very similar to uh, my mate Vince, who has actually done a lot of um, videos on 2DS XL, one of which did very, very well, and that's actually how I found his channel. So when he actually tried to do the repairs on them, uh, the top screens weren't actually available to, to buy, uh, but now they are, and here it is. And I think when we actually have a look at this, we'll be able to see just why these things keep breaking. This is literally as flimsy as flimsy gets. Like, I don't even know how this works. I mean, it's a testament to modern technology and thin LCD screens, but my God, I've finished the mod. This is the retro future from the future. Just want to quickly say that this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you're looking to establish your own website, online store, or obtain a domain name. Very cool website. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. Does it work? Okay, so without any further ado, let's just go ahead and give it a go. I'm not really too sure what to expect but um, I think it'll be fun just to give it a try and see where we get. So it's now time to take this thing apart. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm quite excited, but I'm definitely nervous at the same time. Um, I don't have the highest of hopes right now going into this thing. I definitely don't feel confident. Okay, that looks like all of the screws. Um, so let's just see if we can pop this open. There we go. I think we're there now. Ah, you get one side out and the other side clicks open. Okay, there we go. That looks like we're pretty much there now. I'm just going to be careful not to um, lift up any ribbon cables. So there's actually one ribbon cable at the back, which I imagine is for the cameras. There's two little cables either side and then a ribbon cable at the top. There we go. Okay, and that is the back removed. So there's just two cables here for the speakers. You need to be very, very careful of. And then a ribbon cable for the camera. So the battery is uh, adhered down with a little uh, sticky pad, which was not willing to come off, but it's important that you remove that um, because what we don't want to do is electrocute ourselves or short something out. So, uh, okay, that is a lot of ribbon cables. My God. Okay, and that is the main board removed. As you can see, the little nub thing up here is, uh, is still attached. So I'm just gonna set that to the side and we can now see everything else. And I'm a little bit scared now because uh, this is where we're gonna be getting to the part where there's a lot of fiddly work involved. So there's a couple of things that are coming through this hinge, which we need to be very, very careful of. Um, I don't think we need to disassemble this any further and I don't think we need to remove that bottom screen, which is probably good, but we are gonna to need to take out this hinge here, which is actually opening this thing up. And that doesn't look like it's gonna be terrifically easy. Okay, so I managed to get the hinge out okay without damaging anything. Um, basically, you need to open it all the way up and then it just kind of fell out there. And uh, also, all the buttons are falling out, which is probably not ideal, but. So in order to get this hinge out, you have to just remove the bracket here, which I've just done, and uh, it should now slide out a little bit further. There it is, the little uh, hinge. They are replaceable, so if you break that, it's not a big, big deal. Um, obviously, it's just another expenditure for me. So now we should be able to just slide everything through here. 
There we go. So we've separated the bottom screen and this is where it gets difficult. The tricky parts haven't even started yet because all of this is adhesive and it's all gonna be very, very difficult to get apart. So I'm not really too excited about this if I'm honest with you. I'm just gonna remove this little metal tube here um, just for the sake of it. And we're now really in the realms of the tricky stuff. So basically there's four screws underneath um, here and I picked up some blades because I have seen what people have done is lifted up the design on the front and the screws are underneath. But I'm a little bit worried about doing that, but let's just see how it goes. I'm not sure. They said that it's incredibly, incredibly adhesive. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. There's also always gonna be an aspect of uh, damaging some plastic parts with um, using knives and, and sharp objects. So I'm not too sure if this is gonna go back together looking exactly how it did when I took it apart, but I can actually see the screw there. Oh. Oh. Okay, there we go. So there's the first white bit removed. Right, so now I'm gonna try and take apart this, uh, this red side here. And um, I'm just gonna be a little bit more brutal with this because the plastic is actually a lot thicker than I thought it was. So I'm not as worried as I first was when I tried this. But it's just so funny to be taking apart a console that is literally held together with adhesive sticky pads. That is really, really quite ridiculous. And now, what do we do? I don't actually know. Um, is that just gonna come off nicely? Oh, it looks like it is. Excellent, okay. And there's our screen. Blimey. Right, let's set that to the side. And um, we, now, we now need to take that off. And I'm not sure how to go about doing that. But obviously it's already broken, so as long as I can get it off, Oh no, that's that's separating the layers. We don't want that. Um, just to get that out of the way, we can put that back in later on, obviously. So there's actually a little slit in the hinge here and that, that you can uh, feed everything through that. That's where the ribbon cable goes down. So our last hurdle, there's a little, is that a magnet there? Our last hurdle is basically just to get this, this screen out. Yeah, so look, that is the, uh, the actual LCD screen there. I actually think there's some glass still on here. So I think all I've done is just separated the, uh, the layer, the front layer. All right, so I have actually managed to get the screen out and basically there's some adhesive, um, like a little sticker all the way around the front there and that just kept that, that part on the front. Essentially, I actually separated the two um, glass layers in an LCD screen and in between that is the, the pixel um, kind of liquid stuff, the liquid crystal stuff. So um, probably not the nicest way of doing it. I probably could have uh, separated with a hairdryer first, but what I actually ended up doing was hair drying uh, the whole thing um, in order to separate it from here. Um, in the process, I managed to break this, which has not been great, but I could glue it, but I don't need to because uh, this back piece holds it all together. So it's only gonna be an aesthetic thing and I probably could find a replacement one of these uh, anyway, so now we have the task of putting everything back together, which I'm quite nervous about, uh, if I'm completely honest. Um, so I'm gonna give this, this lens a quick clean. Uh, I did find out that Z Labs actually do a replacement of these for seven pounds. So if you wanted to, uh, you could just get a replacement one of those, um, and then you'd be, you'd be sorted. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is reassemble this front part, and that just involves sticking that down on here, and I don't think it needs to go on in a specific orientation, but you might as well put it in the way that you came. Uh, there's a magnet which goes in here, and I'm not sure which way this came out of, so potentially um, my sleep function might not work because of that magnet not being in the right orientation, but I'm really not bothered. I just wanna get this thing back together again. Just make sure there's no dust, or as little dust as you can possibly get, and then set the front down. I don't really know why I'm saying this like it's a tutorial, Okay, so once you've got the screen back in, just go ahead and put this little, uh, what I can only imagine is the antenna, back in as well. 
Okay, that looks that looks all right. I think that's just going to press down nicely in there. So let's pop the front of the uh, the top piece back on and clip everything into place and all of the bits at the bottom and that looks about right. Be very, very careful and gentle whilst doing all of this because um, Nintendo built the 2DS XL to be super cheap but in the process that means that it's very A, easy to break and very difficult to uh, to fix. I think I worked out what I'm doing wrong. This little metal ring that is meant to uh, hold this ribbon cable together, I think I'm going to tuck everything into that and then cover up the ribbon cable so that it's all in a nice little ball and then thread that through, then thread the ring through. There we go. Oh my goodness me. Okay, that looks better. So now we just have to get that ribbon cable out. Okay, right, hello ribbon cable, how are you? So there's the hinge, uh, which we now need to push all the way back in again. And it can only usually go in one way, so you need to be quite careful when doing this. And it shouldn't need to force too far in. You shouldn't need to like give it a load of pressure because it should just pressure fit in slowly. So that looks about right. And then once it's actually in there, then you can give it a final little press in and that should be okay. So we're now in the final stages of putting this back together. Hopefully it should just be a case of reconnecting all of the ribbon cables and um, putting them all back into place. Now there's a couple of these ribbon cables here which have come in and gone out very, very easily. So hopefully they're still gonna be making a connection. I think it's all just pressure fitted. So as you probably would have seen, I'm more or less uh, all the way um, sorted here. So I've just had to basically put a bunch of the screws back in and tie down all of the ribbon cables back into their, their places. I'm really, really concerned about those ribbon cables because some of the connectors that I've seen, I'm not familiar with. So I'm, hopefully I haven't damaged them or anything, but I think this is pretty much it. So I'm just putting the back cover on. There's a couple more things that we just have to uh, connect and then we are done. So I'm very, very excited to put this all back together. So what I need to do is put these final four screws back in and then test it. And so help me, am I nervous at this point because this is it. This is the final straw. Moment of truth. Let's flick it over. Everything looks like it's closed up absolutely fine. Obviously I need to put these top bits back on. Oh no, that joystick's not gone back in properly. Ugh. Okay, well, I'll sort that out in a second. Here we go, let's just try it. Does it even work? Blue light has come on. Please. Please. <gasps> oh my goodness, but the bottom screen's not working. There we go, that feels much better. It just went in with a bit of pressure there, which means that it's slotted back into place. Fortunately, I didn't have to uh, disassemble that whole thing and the ribbon cable for the screen that is causing the problem just hasn't been plugged in. So that was a very, very rookie error from me in my excitement to, uh, to get this thing closed up. But that does mean that we now have a working 2DS XL. Goodness gracious me, have I finally done this? That is the question. Let's pop this uh, SD card back in as well because that had the games on it. Now there's a couple of things I'm gonna to need to quickly go through and diagnose actually work. So we've got the power button on the bottom. That's the first stage. Right, so let's diagnose whether or not anything is broken. So we've got sound. Uh, have we got touch screen? Yes, we do. We do have touch screen. Keys work, joystick works, nub works, and Let's see if the cameras work. That's quite an important one. So the back camera works. Now let's uh, swap to the inner camera and see if that works. Yes, okay, that works okay. And uh, it looks like everything's fine. Oh my goodness me. I was not expecting to actually fix that. The final thing I need to do is just adhere these back on. And I think it was the red one on the top and the white one on the bottom. But I can probably check that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's red one on the top. 
push that back down, white one on the bottom, just going to be very, very careful when pushing that back down again and hopefully we won't damage anything. This Let's Refurb was sponsored by Squarespace. If you're looking to set up a website, obtain a domain name, use Squarespace. They have 24 hours, seven days a week, award-winning service. There's definitely always someone there to help you. It's great for people wanting to establish their first website. You can start a free 14-day trial today and get 10% off your first purchase using code THERETROFUTURE. Okay, so the final thing for us to do is just give this thing a little Mr. Sheen and uh, clean it all up. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to talk about my opinion and my thoughts on this mod because, well, repair rather, it's not really a mod, but this is one of the most tricky repairs to, uh, to do. And I definitely don't disagree with that. It has not been easy. When you think about like the DS Lite and how easy that was to, uh, to fix and replace the screens on those, this is definitely, definitely on a completely another level. So I'm gonna do a little bit of further testing on this thing and uh, maybe get back to you on Facebook if you have any questions on what you wanted to know, if that works and everything like that. But as far as I'm concerned, this thing works absolutely brilliantly. Um, it comes with a couple of games on it as well, a couple of games from the shop, which is quite nice. Um, although I'm not sure if they stay when I reset this, but yeah, it's got Pokemon from the, uh, the virtual console, uh, which is always a nice little game to have. Pokemon Crystal version. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring it. And uh, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments section below. Um, tell me if you think that you could have a go at this and how did I do in terms, of, uh, in terms of actually repairing this? Was it as hard as I thought? No. Was it as tricky as I anticipated? Definitely. And um, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.